how does the system effectively handles the complexity of a project. These are the design principles we generally follow in software design process. What is the specific functionality of that core segment? The data which is processed within a system is not visible to the users. Hello and warm welcome to One and All. It is Dr. Ravikumar Vaibhi, Department of Computer Science, Vidyashram, First Grade College, Mysuru the temple of excellence. In today's class, you will learn about a new chapter, a new unit called software design principles. What is the meaning of designing a software? Let me tell you that. The software design principles are concerned with providing means to handle the complexity of the design process effectively. What does this mean? I'm stating that providing a means to handle the complexity of the design process effectively. How does the system effectively handles the complexity of a project? That means the complexity of a project is divided into different modules that is module 1, 2, 3 and so on like that M1, M2, M3, M4. The same thing will be explained now. That is effectively managing the complexity will not only reduce the effort needed for design but also reduces the scope of the introducing the error during design. That means by dividing the big problem into smaller sub problems, it not only increases the effectiveness of the design principles, it also helps in reducing the error. The minimal error can be maintained in terms of this. That is the meaning of the software design principles which can handle the complexity by dividing it into a smaller sub problems. If that is the case, the following principles of the software design includes the first step that is prob problem partitioning that is dividing that into smaller sub problems. Once it is divided, we will go for an abstraction module wherein you will see that that is uh, the abstraction that is not the complete detailed information is given to the user. We have two different types of abstraction that is functional or function abstraction and the other one is data abstraction. If that is the case, we have two different types of abstraction here. Then we have a modularity that is the third type of this. Then finally, you have top down and bottom up approach strategies. These are the design principles we generally follow in software design process. If that is the case, which is the first one problem partitioning that is dividing that into partitioning. That means segregating that into different parts that is called as partitioning. That means for smaller problem, we can handle the entire problem at once. But for the significant problem, that means for a bigger problem or a large problem, we need to partition them into or divide them and conquer them into different partitions so that the smaller pieces are combined together to get a solution to the big problem. That is the meaning of this. That means we divide them first, then we will conquer, we will combine all these solutions, combine all these solutions so that it becomes a solution to the entire big problem. That is the thing we are going to use. That means we will partition the bigger problem into segregating of different parts so that the abstraction level which is there in the design principle can be noticed and once it is noticed very well, we can modularize the different types of partitions which is mentioned in the first phase into different modules later finding a solution either using the top down approach or using the bottom up approach to find a solution to the smaller sub problems to which in turn finds a solution to the bigger problem that is the meaning of this the software design goal is to divide the problem into manageable pieces that means we are going to divide them into manageable parts then which are the qualities or usefulness of doing that? The first one is easy to understand. 
so that what is that problem and then it is very simple to analyze then easy to test then we have easy to modify easy to maintain easy to expand suppose if there is any expansion new feature is to be incorporated we can do so very easily that is we can do those operations very easily that is to maintain that is to modify that is to test and simple and understandable all these are certain types of features by doing so if that is the case these pieces cannot be entirely independent of each other as they together form the system because one of the part is interlinked with another part so there is a dependency from one partition to another partition that means one module to another module suppose if that is the case we will come across two concepts here that is cohesion and coupling cohesion and coupling let me tell you that later on if that is the case the second step of this modular design is that means the software design principles includes the function abstraction along with we have data abstraction that is we have a two common types of abstractions here one of the abstraction is functional abstraction then the second one is data abstraction well, then what is the meaning of functional abstraction you will write down the code a module is specified by the method it performs that means you will write down the code the code which does the task of functionality specific function is called as functional abstraction what does this functional abstraction indicates that what is the specific functionality of that code segment is not given completely that means the details of it is not given completely that is the meaning of functional abstraction these functional abstraction forms the basis for function oriented design approach for example if you have an object oriented approach like c++ and java you can make use of it for those technologies then we have data abstraction the first one is functional abstraction the next one is data abstraction in case of this data abstraction the details of the data elements are not visible to the users that means the data which is processed within a system is not visible to the users only the system which receives input from the user is going to be viewed but the internal processing the intermediate results of it are not completely visible to the user that is why we call it as a data abstraction what is the meaning of modularity that is the third phase of this design principle in this case we have the modularity that means we have already we have partitioned them into different uh, problems like problem 1 problem 2 so on like that if that is the case modularity specifies the division of software into separate modules which are differently named and addressed and are integrated later on to obtain a completely functional software the same thing what i explained that divide and conquer strategy that means if we have a big problem divide them into smaller sub problems then we will conquer them that is we will combine the solutions of all these smaller sub problems to get an integrated complex solution that means the complexity of the problem can be solved with very easy kind of testing expansion and all those things that is done with the help of combining the smaller sub problems then what is that it is the only property that allows a program to be intellectually manageable that means we can manage the modules very intellectually that means uh, the entire problem can be managed very easily that means single large programs are difficult to understand and read due to a large number of reference variables control paths and global variables it even it is very difficult to analyze once the program is written by the use programmer it is very difficult to analyze in order to make them analyzable for any other programmer who wants to use it or who wants to extend it or who wants to reuse the code written by other programmer then it has to be modularized 
that is the reason for using this module type of operations modularity what are the properties of uh, modularity that is the first one is each module is well defined system that can be used with other applications that means we can use reuse the application each module has single specified objectives that means there must be only one single problem with the module suppose if there is module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 module 1 must be specifically for problem 1 module 2 must be specifically for module problem 2 module 3 for problem 3 module 4 for problem 4 so that the solution to this each of these problems are combined together to get a solution to the bigger problem that is the main idea here these modules can be separately compiled and saved in the library that means it can be saved and compiled and saved in a collection of functionality present in the library that is the main thing here module should be easier to use and build it must be easily compilable and build modules are simple simpler form outside than inside that means modules are very simple to see but it is the complexity solvable functionality that is the capability of the modularity if you observe this what are all the advantages of using this modularity and what are the disadvantages of using this modularity is going to be explained now if that is the case, the first advantage of using the modularity is this. It allows the large problems to be written by several or different people. Not only one person. If I have a design of the software, any person who is good at the software product development can make use of that by dividing that into smaller sub partitions and they can effectively come out of the solution for that. That means different people. It encourages the creation of commonly used routines to be placed in the library and used by other programs. That means we can create a library of functions. That means a library consisting of functions. These functionalities can be placed here into the library and that can be reused by others which is the next one. It simplifies the overlay procedures of loading large programs into main storage. That means if there is any functionalities like function 1, function 2, function 3, these existing features can be made use of as a library into another function that is into function 4, function 5, function 6. So that the functionality of this is available for use in this module 2 that is in this module 2 that is from module 1 that means we have a library of functions library of functions we can make use of this library of functions into function 4 5 6 of module 2 that is the meaning of that it provides more checkpoints to measure progress that means what is the progress of our work that can be easily analyzed by dividing them into modular fashion. It provides a framework for complete testing more accessible to test. That means what is the problem with uh, module 1? What is the problem with module 2? Problem with module 3? Module 4? All those can be tested very easily and it can be identified whether all of the requirements are met or not is checked very effectively. It produced the well designed and more readable program. That means it produces a well-designed software model so that it can be used effectively at the user end. That means while doing the acceptance testing, it is very easy to understand what the programmer has designed and implemented. If I move on to the disadvantages of this modularity, first one is execution time may be longer. That means when I have a module 1 specifically, module 2, module 3, module 4, each of these modules must be tested and executed separately. That means, of course, there is an interdependency from module 1 to module 3, 4, some so on like that. Even in those cases, we must have to, we must test each of these modules individually, separately. That is the thing, which, which takes more time, which takes more time. Even the storage size perhaps not certainly increased. Then compilation and loading time may be longer. That means uh, each of the modules uh, execution time as well as the compilation time will be more in case of modularized fashions. 
that means that we have intermodal co module communication problems may be increased that means i told you that there is a cohesion as well as coupling what is the meaning of cohesion that means the degree of interdependency between one module and another module is measured by the cohesion as well as the coupling that means in this in that case if there is any communication flow of data from one module to another module that has to be analyzed carefully otherwise that lead to some unpredictable results that is the thing here more linkage required that is runtime may be longer more source lines may be written must be written and more documentation has to be done for example module 1 is corresponding to the documentation and documentation corresponding to module 2 module 3 so on and so forth all these documentations must be maintained so which is very cumbersome and feels tedious job to do the documentation for each of these modules that is why we call it as this is a disadvantage of this modular fashion so with this i am going to conclude this session uh, which is a very good and effectively understandable session because modular designing is very very important in industry if they keep the entire big problem separately then it is very difficult to find a solution to it so they will divide them into smaller sub problems the solutions to the smaller sub problems will give them a solution to the entire big problem so this is the approach or strategy used in industry kindly come back to me if you have any questions thank you very much thank you one and all